Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 109 of the I Rock Knits podcast. My name is Corey Eichelberger, and it is a bright, sunny day, 29 degrees Fahrenheit here in the southwest suburbs of Minneapolis and St. Paul in Minnesota. We have a little snow on the ground, and the winds have been howling. Uh, sunny days in Minnesota are lovely. I was really warm in the car this morning. The sun was shining in on my side of the car. I literally had to take my coat off because the sun can be so intense, but it is bitter cold. Yesterday, I didn't even want to leave the house, um, so I didn't until, <laughs> until much later in the day. But I have so much to talk to you about today. Like the table is full. The show notes just got longer and longer all week. And I was like, what, what is going on? Why do you have so much to say? So let's get right into it. What am I wearing today? I am wearing my Corey's Stories cowl. I did a collaboration with Sharon of Knit Style Yarns. And I love this little cowl. It was not super well loved when I published it because of the edge. You have a little intarsia, which scares people. But literally all you do is drop the gray yarn and pick up the green. It is no different than doing a stripe at the end of the row and you just work across. It has this lovely little lace pattern in it and it's perfect for mini skeins. Could you do it without the edging? Absolutely, you could do it all in one color and that would be fine. You would just have little sections that would be divided up. But I thought, oh, I was trying to find something to just put on with my new Gudrun Shoden <laughs> dress that I got. Um, it's so me. So the top half, I wonder if I can show you. The bottom half, it splits and becomes purple with purple. Um, but yeah, the top half is orange. It's super soft. It's a little oversized. I probably could have gone down a size. Um, but it's comfortable. I just put leggings on and boots and uh, I thought I would find something that had some orange in it. Not hard in my closet, <laughs> but welcome to everyone. I'm so glad you're here. Happy Thanksgiving to those of you that are gonna celebrate in the US. Um, we will be having uh, just the four of us, Kylie and Stevie and the two of us on Friday for a meal. Um, not on actual Thanksgiving Day. They do his family. Um, and once you start sharing a daughter or a son, you understand that. So his aunt does it at five o'clock. In the last couple of years, they've come to us and we've done one o'clock and then they leave. And it's just frustrating because they're not here that long and then they have to take off and then they have to eat another meal. And I said, we don't have anything going on. Why don't we just do it on Friday? <laughs> And then Kylie said, mom, tape the parade and the dog show and we'll play it on Friday in the kitchen when we're cooking and it'll seem like it's Thursday. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just do a little, and we won't make a lot because they will just have eaten it on Thursday and it's just the four of us. So um, they requested peach cobbler. I always make my rice pudding, which is in the recipe section. Um, list on Ravelry and in the show notes of previous podcasts so you could also just search for the link on um, the YouTube channel and and find which which episode I talked about rice pudding and no one else eats it really but me my mother-in-law may used to eat it I miss her um, and my mom and dad would eat it but they're not coming so because I was just down there and then we're gonna go for uh, the weekend before Christmas uh, to them. So it's, you know, Thanksgiving week. Ross has Wednesday off as well. So we're going to do, we have some things to get done around here. He needs a new winter coat. So we have to do a little shopping. Uh, yeah. So I have lots to tell you. Let's do the other two recipes since I was talking about recipes. I have two dip recipes for you this week that I'm pretty excited about. <laughs> you know me and uh, nachos and tacos and those kinds of things. So this one I've been saving in my folder and I thought, oh, it's not a Thanksgiving um, recipe, but who cares, right? So the first one is called Fiesta Corn Dip. It's a big batch of dip, um, four cans of corn, you could use frozen, two cans of Rotel, 
one green pepper chopped, one cup of cilantro, one onion chopped, one cup of mayo, one cup of sour cream, one cup of shredded cheese, taco seasoning, and Cajun cheese seasoning. And then you mix that all together and you top it with Fritos and cilantro. And then you can add more cheese or sour cream or mayo and, until it's smooth. And then you just use it as a dip. So it's mostly corn with some other vegetables in it. And then that mix of mayo, sour cream, and taco seasoning. She also used Cajun seasoning. Uh, and then the second one is for a queso, which, you know, you want to make queso. Not too hard, right? And a lot of people just melt some Velveeta and put Rotel in it. But this one sounded like it had something that I had never heard of before. Queso by Chef Tim Clowers on Instagram. That first recipe by, was by Amber Kenise, K-N-E-S-E on Instagram. And this guy is kind of a non, doesn't seem, he seems like a home chef, like things you can make at home. A pound of Velveeta cheese cubed, eight ounces of jack cheese, and eight ounces of char cheddar cheese. So a lot of cheese. A quarter of a red onion diced, three tablespoons of cilantro, a 12 ounce can of diced tomatoes, a four ounce can of green chilies, and an eight ounce can of evaporated milk. Doesn't that make like it sound like it would make it really creamy and delicious? Yeah. Cover and bake at 325 for 45 minutes. So you bake that. Stir well to incorporate all the ingredients after baked, because I think he is putting everything in unheated. He's just cubing everything, and so that's melting it all down. So I would just like stir halfway through. But I just thought that the evaporated milk sounded fascinating. So I might have to make a batch of that for when we play games on Friday night after, after our Thanksgiving dinner. It might be nice to have a turkey sandwich with some queso or some Fiesta corn dip, <laughs> right? Change it up a little. Are any of you having Mexican for your celebrations? Um, Mexican food? Because uh, I do know people do that. There are lots of people in the world who don't like turkey, so they have other things. I talked to a lady, who, I talked to a lady this week, they're having prime rib, and I thought, oh, that sounds delicious. The sweater of the week this week is my Glacier sweater, and I cannot believe I haven't talked to, about it on the podcast. I teach it in my classes, and so I have this memory of talking about it a lot, but I Googled on, in my Ravelry group, all the podcast show notes. I Googled on YouTube, and it did not come up that I had ever talked about it, and I thought, that's really strange, because it is probably one of the most popular sweaters in my sweater class. So if I've talked about it, you probably all forgot to, and we're just gonna get it again. <laughs> this is a sweater by Hohi Locatelli. It is knit for fingering weight yarn, 23 stitches to four inches. It came out in the book Interpretations, Volume 5, that she does with her uh, writing partner, Vera Valmacki. Uh, it's an adult A-line, knit on the bias, crew neck, fitted, long-sleeved, no ease. It has a raglan sleeve, seamless. It says, I've wanted to explore this construction for a long time in this tunic back and front, start as small triangles, and then the rest of the sweater is knit with increases and decreases to create a biased fabric. It is worked in the round with no seams. It goes from extra small to 4XL. Um, that is a 29 bust circumference to a 56 bust circumference, and she used La Enemy. What happened with mine is I saw someone's post on Instagram or on Ravelry and they had used these colors and I love them. And mine is more muted than the colors in the one that I saw. So the person either used a filter or the colorways that they got were brighter than mine. But this is Knit Picks, Hawthorne Fingering, and I went to that woman's project page and I just wrote down all the colors and ordered them from Knit Picks. So I got one skein of Arletta, Elliot, Goose Hollow, Kenton, Kearns, and Lovejoy. And then alternated skeins in between all the way down to make the Vs. 
I'll make sure I'm putting a picture in of the original, which is just kind of a solid icy gray, gray color. Um, but then uh, this just goes two rows, one, one row of one, one row of the other, two rows of one, and just alternates. And you, you guys know I love a good tunic. Um, I just wish my colors would have been a little brighter because they were a little more vibrant in the picture that I originally saw. But I like it and it really seems to hit a sweet spot with a lot of people. Okay, so Glacier Tunic Hohi Locatelli. And then the shawl, the little shawl this week, reminds me so much of the Easy Shawl, which you know is one of my favorites. And if you haven't looked at that shawl or if you've never knit the Easy, you need to go over and take a look at that. And almost everybody I know has a skein of that. <laughs> long color repeat yarn in their stash. So the easy I've talked about a number of times, but this is very similar. It's kind of that offset um, V check mark type of pattern. Um, looks like a giant check mark on the wall. It's called Sailing by Meg Gadsby. It came out in July of 2015, 18 stitches to four inches, fingering weight on a six and a nine. Uh, it's an asymmetrical triangle shawl knit in comforting garter stitch with bands of stocking stitch included for geometric in interest and texture. The pattern is written for DK eight ply yarn and fingering sock. Oh yeah, because it's not listed on there. Um, the shawl can be adjusted by adding or omitting pattern section. So I purchased this from my friend Janet who had all of her yarn and many of her shawls on sale. Um, she's going through a cancer journey, I don't know, battle. I, I, um, and she has a website and I've shared it before. It's called mysableyarns.com. And she got in touch this week. And she is offering 30% off anything in her shop using the code IROC, I-R-O-C. So my first name spelled backwards, I-R-O-C, there's no K uh, in her shop, 30% off, because I um, have mentioned it a couple times on my Instagram and here, and she's made some sales from that, and she really is trying to clear out a lot of her things and to really downsize some of the, you know, crafting um, yarn and finished objects that she has. So you can go over to mysableyarns.com uh, and take a look at edited so we could look at this shawl, but see how it has this nice little dip in the front. And then this one is kind of the shorter end. And then this one is the longer end. And can you see that it has garter and stockinette? Isn't that lovely? I mean, what a nice, easy, and then she used this color changing yarn. And I like red. I just don't have a lot of red in my stash or in my closet for sweaters. So I, I have some Madeline Tosh Tarte yarn that is glorious. And I thought to myself, you need to knit that red sweater up so you have a red sweater. So I, I'm gonna be casting that on here in all my spare time. I mean, things have just gotten crazy around here with testing and... So anyway, I'll put that back on. Mary Brevig, I know you watch, and this would be a great shawl for the library knitters, I think. It's super simple, long tail, so easy to wear, uh, garter and stockinette, and you all, got, you, you all have fingering weight <laughs> skates that you don't know what to do with. I mean, we've been talking about that um, at knitting, I think, so this would be great. Help me remember to, t to tell everybody about it on Tuesday. <laughs> I don't usually call people out and make notes uh, on the podcast, but okay. I have some tricks and tips today. I don't always have um, those things on the podcast, but let me share. We, I have my patterns for sale in four places. So on Ravelry, on Etsy, on my website, as well as Love Crafts. So you can purchase them anywhere. But what happens is people that use Ravelry, they want it in their, their Ravelry library, right? They want to be able to download it and have it in their Ravelry library. But there are some people that are not on Ravelry anymore. They can't be on Ravelry because of the new website design. We've talked about that. 
And so I do have them on Etsy. Etsy makes pattern downloading a little bit of a challenge. And so sometimes I will get a, I bought the pattern and I can't find it. And so I put together a little checklist of how you do it. So you open the Etsy browser, you log into your account, you go to purchases and reviews, and then you scroll to find the pattern purchase. And then you click on download all files. And that might seem obvious, but on the Etsy site, there's so much stuff. If you don't know to go to your purchases and reviews and scroll down to find where the pattern is, it will sit out there forever, but you have to scroll down so that you can find it and then download all files. So I'm gonna put that in the show notes this week and, and then those of you that want that buy patterns on Etsy or think that that might happen to you, there's your little tip or trick. Then I saw a video on Instagram that was shocking to me. So I thought, okay, when you want to pull from the center of a ball and you can't get the center out. Now, there are people who like to unwind from the outside because they hate pulling from the center. So I went in my closet and I wanted one of those big um, Michaels, Joan Crafts, big Walmart skeins, but I, did, I didn't have one. They're, they're, pro I, they're probably in the basement, I have a couple. But so I just found this one, but it is for a center pull ball. So I'm taking the band off and then this is what they tell you to do. Pound the skein on the table. And there isn't an end tucked in, like I can't see an end sticking out, right? So they say, bang it on the table. Bang it on the table. And then you're gonna be able to reach in and just get the end out. And what I read is it makes the hole at the end bigger. It loosens up the skein. And then you should be able to just reach in and just pull out the center. Now, I'm just doing this in real time here, folks. Um, so let me see what I do, how I do. Not bad, right? <laughs> I did try it once before with some knitters on Tuesday that I was teaching how to knit, and it worked both times there too. And we had the big, longer red heart skeins Look at how much bigger the hole got too. How did we not know this? So bang hard, like bang a number of times, like until the hole gets bigger and then you can stick your fingers in and you can just pull it out. Best tip of the day, right? I'm gonna make an Instagram reel about that, I think. Wow, 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 wow. I don't know what else it would, would, would who, who would have thought of that, right? Like why would someone think pounding the yarn on the table, I'm gonna put this back where it belongs in the box where it belongs, where someday it may, may or may not get in it. You guys, I have, um, I have sized out of my closet. The closet floor, now I have shelves up two sides and a hall closet that has four boxes. I downsized the four boxes. Um, into one stack and now the closet floor, which is like two by three by three, is full of yarn. Like I can't get it, there's nowhere to put it. I have to get another box. I have to put another box out. I need to do a de-stash. So I do, I did put up that yarn, the La Bien Ami Cori Confetti yarn, the worsted weight. It is expensive yarn. I have sweaters quantities. It is a lot of money but you can't get it elsewhere, it's hard to get, and I discounted the price. So if you are interested, go to my Ravelry page, take a look, there are two colors. One of the uh, sweaters quantities is six skeins, one is five skeins. Um, it's very lovely yarn, very nice, but the palette was too light for me. And then last week, I showed you guys all my Hoot Nanny hoodie that I was wearing, and I said that I would put a picture in of my friend who's in my knitting group, Hilka's, and I couldn't find it on Ravelry. So I texted her and I said, did you ever post that? And she said, no. She said, let me see if one of my kids will take a picture. And so she sent me her picture of her Hoot Nanny hoodie. 
And see how she did it in the opposite? Like I always think that you do the dark color, the color and then the white as your contrast for the Latvian braid. But she did the cream with this lovely blue. She's a real blue person. She knits a lot of blue. And it's just so cute. So I had the picture on my phone and so I printed it out so that I put it in my folder so I'd remember to show all of you uh, Hilka's color choices for that hoot nanny hoodie from last week. Things I saw on the internet. <laughs> it's a huge section this week. I need to stay off my phone and my iPad. I mean, come on, Corey. You have, I, I bet I have eight things here to, sh to show you guys. So let's go through them kind of a little more quickly, right? The first one is this darling pumpkin. I know Halloween is over, but you can still have pumpkins at Thanksgiving. Isn't it cute? It's called the Buffalo Plaid Pumpkin by Marie Mayhew. And then they just put a little branch in the top. A cork would work. Isn't that darling? I don't think that would take any time at all. Oh my gosh. I had to share that with all of you. Then there is a company out there that is making storage systems for knitters. So big wall units and for scrapbookers and crochet people. And they open, the front doors open and roll out and then you have all of this stuff. I'll put a picture in. And they're, you know, they're a couple thousand dollars, I think, for the big ones. And they have drawers and cubbies and flat spaces and places to hang your stuff. And they have a table that folds down. And I've seen a few people that have had, like, it's a, a piece of furniture. But I saw the other day that now they have a smaller unit. Well, it's not that small, but it's like a, it's a smaller unit. It's called a cubby. And it's got drawers, all glass, like plastic fronted drawers, and then it pulls out. And I think it's like three feet by, what did I think? Yeah, three feet by three feet maybe. So it's not small. It comes in white and farmhouse gray. And then you can get in view totes or divide, Devi drawers, like divider drawers, I think. And it's $349, so it's expensive. And the reason that I looked at it, because I thought it might fit under my shelf in my closet. And then, then I could put like some supplies in there instead of having supplies kind of everywhere. Like I have project bags everywhere and I have a little cart by my chair. So I thought it might be nice for that, but it won't fit in there, it's too tall. Um, but I'm wondering if they won't put it on sale for Black Friday. So then I thought, I'll tell you all about it because so it's createroom.com that has all of these storage unit places and I know some of you have invested some significant amounts of money into like a yarn room like you turned a yarn room into your craft room you have a space you bought Ikea you know furniture shelving, glass fronted, you know, doors, that kind of thing. So I thought, well, why not share this? I don't know anything about them, not sponsored, whatever. They could certainly sponsor me, except this cubby won't fit in my closet, in my office closet. It would fit in the big closet, but then the vacuum would have to go, right? I don't need to vacuum. <laughs> oh, Corey, you can get a little crazy. Right, a couple of sweaters to show you. Just thought these were so cute. This is called the drawing sweater. Look at those flowers and that self changing color yarn. Is that not lovely? Oh, so cute. I gotta knit that in orange or raspberry. I'm sure the chart is not an easy chart to follow. There would be a lot of counting, I'm gonna guess. But the original colorway was in a blue and white. And then Sonder Yarn did a colorway, uh, colorways, to, uh, you know, setups. So it's by Tomomi Yoshimoto. It was released, it says this weekend, which was, I just saw it not too long ago. Sonder Yarn Company. Um, oh, that's funny, Carly, you liked this too. <laughs> of course you did, the sweater's blue. 
Carlos, my friend. Um, <laughs> but they have one, two, three, four, five, six colorways sets that they did together. Um, she may have even used that yarn. I assume she used the yarn for the sweater. It looks oversized, uh, really cute drawing sweater. And then I saw this one and I can't get it. And so someone can figure out, someone in Finland who watches can figure out how to get this one. This is by Olga Putano Designs. She's the one who did that Here Comes the Sun sweater that I want to knit. It's the color work with the half sun rises at the top. Um, but this one came out in Novita Knits Magazine, which is online in Finland. Um, and it's called the Kvitka Swant Show. And I'm assuming that it'll probably, it's probably in English or will come out in English, but oh my Lord. Oh, that is so awesome. Like that is just lovely, super fun. So now I have another one. She used Novita Icelandic wool. So Novita Knits has a magazine and they have wool and um, I just thought that was stunning and something maybe you're not seeing in your, you know, out and about because um, it's a fin Finnish magazine and my mother-in-law spoke Finnish, my great, my grandmother-in-law. Um, so I have an affinity for that, but the ma I'm not sure about the magazine. I, I don't know if I can get the magazine or the pattern in English. So I got to, I got to figure that out. I did some looking and then I don't know, I got distracted whatever. I saw this video on Instagram of this woman making an ornament and that's a whole story for why I'm looking at craft projects um, that people can make but I that will come in Corey's stories and she was making ornaments the clear glass ornaments and putting little copies of the book she read that year in the ornament. Really cute. So it is ETST on Instagram. And there are the ornaments with the tiny little books in them. And then she shows you how to make them. So she buys cardstock, she copies the picture, she makes a sheet of paper, she prints it out, she cuts them out, she glues them onto the cardstock. She does a little, you know, makes the little book. She puts the cover on both sides so you can see it from both sides. She drops it in the ornament. And then those are all the books she read this year. Is that not cute? Do I wanna do that with the 100 books that I read this year? No, but I really want, I really want to have all those books in that little thing. I thought that was so cute. And if you're a craftsy card maker person, that would take you no time at all, right? Like you just copy and paste the little pictures on one sheet, print it out. She, I think she printed it out on sticker paper, um, just a sheet of like label paper, and then just stuck them on and cut them. So really, you know, it would be an all afternoon project. Let's be, let's be real, but really a fun idea. If you have a book lover, or if you just have someone that wrote a book, um, like I could put my two little books, my Minnesota 52 book and my Knit Words book in one. I, that would be really cute. So I wanted to share that, but ETST on Instagram, and it is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth post down right now. So not very far. You don't have to scroll down very far to see. And she did step by step how she made it. So really cute. And I think most of those reels are like a minute 30 or whatever. So you can, you can watch it in no time. Then my friend Mary Brown, hi Mary, sent me an email this week that she found a YouTube series that she found really interesting. And so I went over and watched it. And it is called The Fabric of Canada, The Knitters of Newfoundland and Labrador. It was by the Campaign for Wool in Canada. The video that, the first video I watched was only four minutes and five seconds long, but it's about this woman who is a knitter and who whose husband passed away and she had six or seven children and needed a way to make money. And so she started um, knitting for hire. And yeah, it was 
really, really a nice little video. There were two other ones, the story of our clothes for the 100 mile jacket. So they try to raise the wool, card the wool, spin the wool, weave the wool and make a jacket all within 100 miles of everything sourced, which was interesting. And then there are two videos on weaving. So I'll link those in the show notes. But if you go to YouTube, you can just Google the Fabric of Canada or Campaign for Wool dash Canada, and it'll come up. It, it popped right up for me. Um, and I, yeah, I thought the, the little, the story about the woman was really interesting. And she sells her handmade items through a shop in Canada, um, baby clothes and um, adult sweaters and, and you see her boxing up these beautiful cabled sweaters she's knit. So I'll put the link to the shop too. Then tip number one, two, three, four, five, six, or things I saw number seven. <laughs> the Minnesota Knitters Guild meets once a month on a Tuesday and they have not gone back to in person. So they're having their meetings on Zoom and they have amazing teachers. And the cost to join the guild is uh, $50, $40 for the whole year. And you get all their content and then they have knit nights. And I know some of you are looking for knitting groups to knit in. So they have knit nights and you don't have to live in Minnesota to be a member. There are people in the guild from all over. And then they have their yarn over knitting event every year, which is always in April, but this year they've moved it to September and I'm teaching. So if you wanna to come to Minnesota in September, which would be a beautiful time to come and go to yarn over, you can register for the classes. Once you're a member, they get first entry um, into the classes. Um, and that happens shortly here in the next month or two, we sign up for classes. Although that was when it was in April, so maybe they'll push that back a little bit. But, and then they have a ton of resources and I missed the August meeting. I, I, I think that was the one. And it was um, the native knitter gal um, from New Mexico who does beautiful indigenous knitwear designs. And I wanted to see it and it was on the website, all the previous meetings. So you could literally pay, you know, a couple dollars a month for your membership and sit and watch all those teachers for an hour at, on Zoom. Uh, like what a great resource. I just, I went back now I'm watching her. I'm halfway through that video and it's very good. And I'm gonna go back and see uh, what other meetings I missed. In September, they always have a state fair meeting where people can show and tell all their ribbon prizes from the state fair, which is the most popular meeting of the year because Minnesota knitters are extraordinary knitters and they enter beautiful things in the state fair. And then they get beautiful ribbons and then they come to the guild meeting <laughs> and show us all their beautiful things. So I just thought, gosh, I should mention that. So it's the, it's um, knitters.org. Minnesota Knitter Guild. You can go in, become a member, and then all their resources are there. They have a newsletter every month. Um, yeah, I thought, why, why wouldn't we take advantage of some of these things that are provided to us? Okay, things I have to tell you. <laughs> I think that's so funny that that's the name of this section. Maybe I should call it whispering in your ear or something. I don't know. Somebody help me think of something clever. I'm torn on whether or not I should do Vlogmas this year. Vlogmas is where you record your day every day for the entire month of December. None of you are going to tell me not to do it. <laughs> no one's going to say, no, nah, don't do it. But it's a lot of work. And so I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna do it or not. I'm seeing that there are some people that are signing on to do it. It's a, it's supposedly a challenge. And I could record like two days, like Monday and Tuesday and put it up. So I'd only be putting up like 15 little video snippets. So they were not really well watched. Like four, 400, 500 of you watched all of them. Um, but I usually have over a thousand, sometimes 1500 people that watch the podcast. So I was thinking, you know, if it, 
if it isn't of that much interest, it is a lot of work to do every day. And I still put out two other podcasts in December and December can just get busy. So I'm just talking off the top of my head here. You know, sometimes you got to talk through something with a friend and then you, you decide, oh, it's not worth it. <laughs> While you're talking, you're like, you know, maybe you shouldn't do it. I love, there are a couple I love watching. I love, I like watching Marilisa. Um, I like, I love watching Christina and Tad um, from Chelsea Yarns because Tad is hilarious and um you know he helps her with her business but he's just funny and then she gets exasperated with him and i just i love watching that part of it i did ask ross once if he would do some video with me and absolutely not mm. he's very introverted and um not that he couldn't do it but uh it, not his thing so i have a call out for all of you to send a birthday card to a little boy I'm going to read you the note. So last week I told you about Nick and Liv DIY, the people who do Good Works Wednesday. They go out and clean up people's yards and do repair work for people. Um, and then they posted this post that they got from a lady. I was wondering if you could help make a post for my son. He's three, his birthday is December 14th, he will be four. We will have a party for him like we've done the last three years. He's special needs, autistic, and was born with a very rare birth defect. The last three years, no one has ever shown up to his birthday party, ever. It'll probably be the exact same thing this year. As a mom, that hurts my whole heart, soul crushing. All he wants to be is normal like kids his age, so I'm asking for birthday cards for him this year to show he is loved. He loves to check the mail with me every day and gets so excited when we get junk mail that we let him open up. I could only imagine him opening up a birthday card for him. I just want to make this birthday special for him. Now, I assume that Nick and Liv are reaching out and doing something so the fire truck comes or somebody shows up. Like, I hope that they know this woman somehow, some way, or they live near her. I don't, I'm not sure, but there's an address and you people are good people. And you can make a birthday card, your kids can make a birthday card, you can print a birthday card, you can buy a birthday card and put it in the mail. The little boy's name is Alex, A-L-X is what they put on there. Now I'm assuming that, that, that maybe they just abbreviated or whatever, but they'll know who the cards are for. P.O. Box 35707, Tulsa, Oklahoma 74153. If you live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we need to figure out how to help this lady get some kids to that birthday party, right? Like, come on, we could do that, right? Anyway, but let's shower this little boy with birthday cards. They did post it on Instagram. They have a pretty big following. I'm gonna assume that he's gonna get hundreds, but let's give him some more, right? December 14th, so, and I, you know, you can mail them anytime. They could come early, late. I, I don't think it would matter to them. They don't have to get there on that day, but I just wanted to, to share. Then on to, to things I have to tell you, number four. I'm knitting in Eden Prairie on December 1st with the Minnesota Knitters Guild. So they are doing a new out and about town section. They're going to different communities and suburbs in the Twin Cities um, and having knit night. And so uh, we're, they're coming to Eden Prairie, which is the closest one that they're going to do near me. And it is from 530 until 8 at the Eden Prairie Library, which is a Hennepin County Library. It is right near Prairie Center, Eden Prairie Center. And I have asked a bunch of people from my knitting groups to go and lots of people have responded yes. So... I will be there. I mean, unless I have an illness, you know, I plan to show up. So if anybody is a Minnesota area knitter and wants to join us, I think that would be really fun to get together December 1st, 5.30 to 8. Then I have a couple of, I'm sorry, I made a mistake situations here. Number one, I need to apologize for posting the picture of the Minnesota Vikings cheerleader. I sat here and said, I hope no one else takes a picture and posts it on social media. 
and then I posted it on social media where someone else could take it. And I don't think any of you are terrible people, but I had to get called out by two of you, which was done in kindness and should have been done because in the moment I'm editing and you know, like the podcast can be two hours long and it takes me three or four hours to edit it. Like I go through, because I get up and come back, <laughs> I get a drink, I come back, the dog barks, the husband comes in and talks to me. Like I have to edit. If I did it live, you guys would be watching just, you know. So I'm editing and I'm just moving through and I had the picture and I was telling the story and I slapped, I didn't even think about the repercussions that that could have for that young lady and what it what could happen if someone malicious downloaded that picture. So I went back in, edited the video, which is really hard to do in YouTube. It takes some manipulation after the after the video is already up. They they only let you do four things. <laughs> Otherwise you have to take it down and reload it and then you lose all your data and so um, your subscriber count and your numbers and the people who watched and how you get paid for your ads all goes away and then you have to start no. over. When you make a mistake, you just apologize and move on and don't do it again. So I make mistakes all the time. Like yesterday, I made a huge mistake and I put up two reels on Instagram and if you haven't seen them, it was the first time I ever shared a Corey story on an Instagram reel. And I just sat down quick and recorded it and posted it. And it's titled, How to Upset Your Husband on a Saturday Morning Without Even Trying. And it, it's funny now. It wasn't funny. It, uh, maybe it's not funny here yet. It will be. But so go over and watch that. And then I want to just say that when I talked about the T Stacey Tar Charles trunk show at B Woolen, I showed some of the sweaters and things and some of that stuff's not coming out till spring. Like they're February, they're in the, they're, they've taken the photos, he showed us all this stuff, but he did say that B Woolen does not have access to that and it, it, the books, the new look books come out and the yarns come out and they start shipping to the stores for spring, but it will happen end of January, beginning of February. So the one that I showed with the little glitters on it isn't available. And I should have said that. I mean, cause someone called the store to see about that sweater cause it, it's so cute and it's a lighter weight yarn. And so it's not available right now. So I just wanted to clarify those two things that I kind of messed up on and then let you know that I am participating in the indie gift along again this year and that is the big knit along that is held on Ravelry and uh, designers can participate there are when I looked there were 29 pages of, de of designers participating and there are 25 posts on a page on Ravelry so you know tons and we can choose between 10 and 20 patterns and give them for 25% off between November 22nd, so just coming up here, and November 28th. And anyone can participate. You can just, you can follow them on Instagram, Indie Gift Along, I-N-D-I-E, or you can go over to Ravelry and just search for their group and there are all the information is there. Anyone can participate. You can just buy the patterns and not do the knit along, or you can do the knit along, which goes into um, December and January. And, um, and then they have prizes because every designer is required to gift them five patterns. Um, and then they have some other prizes. So like I gifted two of my books. Um, for a prize and so they give stuff away the whole time so I just wanted to mention that I will be participating and that all of you can go out and you can save 25% off on patterns and then I am trying to sign up today's the last day I was struggling a little bit with um, the rules and the information because I haven't done this one before but it's called the fasten off yarn along and it is being hosted on discord 
You can follow them on Instagram and it is not on Ravelry. So it's their way of not, for the people who can't be on Ravelry in order to, to participate. And that one runs from November 25th to December 9th. Kind of a similar concept. Some of the things are, are uh, you know, different, but I provide 10 to, I think I can do as many patterns as I want for them, 25% off for that time period. And then they have a knit along and then they have patterns. So, and you could do them both, right? You could do them both. But um, the, the Fast Enough uh, yarn along was new last year, I think. Maybe the year before. And I didn't do it, but I got a note from a designer friend this week and I, I was looking at the stuff and I was like, it's just a lot of work to set those things up. You have to make coupon codes and then you have to pr make a, a promotion and then you have to post and then you have to put all your designer information with all your social media links and then you have to link your website. Like they're just pages of things you have to fill out. So it takes you an afternoon to do one and the deadline for the other one is today and I'm only like halfway through the form <laughs> and I have to edit this the Vikings play we're going out to dinner with friends and so you know I gotta get that jammed in here somewhere anyway I have so much still to tell you uh, I have Corey's stories I have the books okay let's go um let's do the books really quick let's see how fast I can do the books I, the book club book for this week was called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, PhD. Um, I did not finish it and I did not go to book club. So I talked to a friend and she said that the discussion was excellent. And our group leader, who's been running our book club for I don't know, 17 years or something, um, her husband is a physician and he read the book and he said, everyone should read this book. It is nonfiction written by a man who's been studying sleep for 20 years, who is passionate about sleep, but it had a lot of information in it. And I was driving to South Dakota and listening in the car and it just couldn't, like, you know, it's a four hour drive, I was by myself. I, I just couldn't keep listening to it. I thought I would finish it on the way down and back. And it, you know, it just got a little dry and I needed something to engage in. So I switched to a different book and then I never, I never went back. But he talked about like um, the difference between a night owl and a morning person, which we have in this household, and how night owls are really at a disadvantage with daily society because we get our best after our ideas in the afternoon, sometimes even in the late afternoon, and we get a second wind later in the day when the rest of the world is shutting down. And for me as a night owl, I mean, that's very true, right? Like I, I can just do much better later in the day. I could sleep so much later in the morning if the world would allow me to, and then just stay up. And And I have been doing that since the pandemic hit. I have been just like, well, forget it. I'm, you know, I'm gonna be up. I'm, I'm often, I try to go to bed because I don't wanna sleep my whole morning away um, because my husband's an early bird. But, you know, sometimes I'm up one, one thirty two, and I could stay up but I have to force myself kind of to go to bed. I have a thing in my phone that goes off at 12.30 that says, think about going to bed. <laughs> because I, I get a second wind and then, but then I don't want to get up at all in the morning until much later. So the book was very interesting. Apparently the conversation was great. Um, so I, I can't recommend it or not recommend it because I didn't finish, but I will. Just thought I would share. Then I started a book called Bright Lights, Big Ass by Jen Lancaster and almost got to the end of that and it, it's very foul-mouthed if you know her if you've read her other stuff if it's humorous comedy but she's very uh flippant and uses a lot of swear words and vulgarity um and the my libby app took it back i i was almost done so we're gonna count it good um it was okay i don't i don't like dumb humor silly humor like Ross and Kylie can laugh at that. They, they can get a real chuckle out of that and I roll my eyes, right? So it kind of depends on the kind of person you are. But she's funny. I mean, she's funny if you want something light and you don't, you don't mind the gratuitous foul language. Um, then I read a book called Tell the Wolves I'm Home by Carol Rifka Brunt. 
and this is got a young protagonist, so it's probably called Young Adult. Um, I didn't look that up, um, but it's a young girl. She's like 14 and her older sister. They're two parents who are accountants, and so uh, they're kind of orphans for part of the year because their parents have to work so much during tax season. And this is written in um, the early 80s. It's set during the AIDS crisis where we were it's kind of like if you now remember back to the beginning of the pandemic and how we were all freaking out when they told it we were hearing kind of through the grapevine that we might have to stay home for a couple of weeks right that's what this is right like you're reading when the AIDS crisis is starting and you come to find out that her uncle has AIDS and her mother is angry and um and he was an artist and she he is her godfather and he is her best friend and he takes her out every sunday to do things in new york city and um it was very well done but i'm the child of the 70s and so i i think i've told this story. yeah i've told i'm sure i've told this story but you know a, a young gay student at my high school took a boy to prom and it was this huge deal the press came from all over the country we could hardly get into our prom there were bodyguards you know it was a whole so like my early life was predicated on you know gay people weren't out then the AIDS crisis happened we didn't know who it was killing how it was killing people what it was doing to people and this whole story is written about that and it was really well done it, it it's really good and there's a another character in the book that you really grow to to admire be kind of fond of because he takes this girl under his wing and she's really struggling and yeah so tell the wolves i'm home and then i'm just finishing today i just i probably have a half an hour left a book called my body by emily radel Rad, and she's an actress model that you may be familiar with she's been in a number of things um, but she talks about being plucked out of uh, the public as a young girl to, to model. And she was like 14 and 15 and it, she was just a body, a piece of meat. Um, she went to photographers, they'd look her up and down, they'd make her stand without her shirt on. They, she was a little tiny, a little bit more voluptuous than some of the other girls and not quite as tall and she felt terrible about herself and her body but she made tons of money and so she kept continued to justify herself that this is a way to make a living and that it was her body and she could do with it what she wanted even though she was also feeling mistreated about having to stay thin and um be a you know runway model and a print model and um and what that did to her later in life so um and it's a short book it i think it's like six hours maybe um and yeah, really fascinating, very interesting, called My Body. So for audiobooks this week. Okay, I have a little Corey story. Just, oh, I have two, but one's huge and one's tiny. My mom called a week ago, two weeks ago, and, and was tearful on the phone. And she just said, you know, um, this is not what I thought my older years would be like. I thought I would be... Um, physically more capable. I would be going to lunch with my friends and they would all be mentally sound and they're not. Uh, you know, she has two very dear friends who are very, you know, definitely frail. Um, one, you know, one's losing her memory uh, significantly and the other has been living with cancer for 20 years and is really wasting away and has, has been on chemo long-term and has uh, lots of health issues. And, you know, she was just, she was just down and so I looked at my calendar and I was like, I need to go. And Ross is going to be out of town for the last two weeks. Um, he went to Chicago for a week and then came back. And then he went to South Dakota, and came back and went to North Dakota and came back. It was just crazy. And so I was going to be home with the dog and, uh, you know, the dog has cancer. So I get a little leery about leaving him, but he's been fine. He's laying at my feet. I mean, he's just been fine. So I thought I just need to go. So I kind of rearranged my schedule, went down on Wednesday, and I'm driving down I-90 across Southern 
Minnesota and it's just flat and boring. And I mean, I made this trip for 30 years at, or more. I've made this trip and it, you know, I go through the same small towns and there's no other way to get there. But you know, I got the, I hit the interstate at Worthington heading towards South Dakota. Um, it's an hour from Worthington. It was where my mom grew up. And all of a sudden, all the bells and whistles on my car go off. Bing, 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 bing. And the lights are going off on the dash. And it says traction control alert, s reduced power, system reduced power. And the I'm pushing the gas and not, like I'm slowing down. Now, I'm not going to zero, but like, I'm like Something, something's going on, right? And I'm going 75 miles an hour because once you hit South Dakota, it's 80. <laughs> and so like I'm cruising along. And so I pull, I pull over and I, I see that there's an exit up ahead and it's just to a small, small town that is not on the highway, but I thought I kind of know where I am. So I pull over and I sit there and everything's going off, turn my car off. I call my dad and you know, I'm like, I might need to be towed. I said, I'm going to call Lucas. He's my nephew. He's a mechanic. Ask him if he knows what that might mean. I called Ross. Of course, he's in meetings. Um, but I leave him the, you know, emergency. Please call me. I broke down. So I sat there for about 10 minutes, started the car, tried to move forward. Same thing. Bing, 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 bing. So I don't know. I moved forward 100 yards. And then Ross called. And I said, you know, do you think... I can limp it into town at, you know, I, I was a long way out still, like, I don't know, maybe 30 miles, let's say. So at, you know, 20 or 30 miles an hour, it's going to take me forever to get to Sioux Falls. But if I can limp it in, then I don't have to pay for a tow truck. And I mean, we have roadside assistance or whatever. And he said, yeah, I think you probably could, but you should call Luke back and, you know, and see if he can get a tow or whatever. So I hang up with Ross and I, I don't know why, but I restarted the car, no bells and whistles. So I pull out, I'm pulling along the edge and I'm pulling forward and it's letting me drive and it's letting me drive. So I call back and I say, it's letting me drive and there are no bells and whistles. And he's like, then, then you can, you know, you can make it to town. So I didn't drive 80, but I didn't drive 20 either. I just went back into town at like 50 and took it straight out to where my nephew works and he put it on the computer and it was a sensor but in my I have an old Cadillac Escalade truck it's a hybrid so it's all computer and um it's a new truck to me which y'all know this is my third one but they stopped making them so it's a 2010 and when the computer goes off like that it doesn't know what module went out so it just shuts you down it's not like a new smart car it's like not a 2022 a car that would know as much and apparently I guess I could have called OnStar and asked them to tell me what that was but anyway I made it but the problem was I had to go to the bathroom when this happened and I was thinking I gotta stop at the next town there's a McDonald's and run in because you know I have to go to the bathroom and I hadn't stopped and then I'm thinking the tow truck's gonna come. And it was cold and windy, very cold and windy. And I'm in my car and I'm thinking if a tow truck doesn't come for an hour or whatever, I'm gonna have to get out and go to the bathroom in the ditch. And it, 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 it was bitter, it was overcast. Or I'm gonna have to figure out how to go to the bathroom in my car, like in a cup, like what, like, lesson of the story stop and go to the bathroom halfway through your trip always <laughs> because I hadn't I was just powering home my hip did great but oh, it was a little scary it was a little like yeah it was a little scary and yeah so there you go that's Corey's story number one stranded on I-90 I have a big story to tell you and I have some video to share about this story. So I'm gonna start at the beginning, but I'm gonna try to, if I miss stuff, it'll be fine. It won't matter to you. I have a friend named Susan who's a knitter who I've known for 30 years because we met in 
when I was taking intermediate knitting and she was taking beginning knitting at a local yarn store and Rosemary was our teacher who became my mentor and her mentor. And Susan traveled for work every single week. So I never saw her a lot but we, we, we remained friends um, all these years. Our daughters, we all both have single daughters. Daughters both have horses. Daughters both swam. Her daughter is five years older than my daughter. But, you know, we were following. We built houses with the same builder at one time. So, like, we're, we're fairly close friends. And it, we, we stay in touch. We go out to dinner with she and her husband. Um, and she met a woman at a hair salon. And the woman's name was Anna, and she was there with a young girl getting her hair cut, and she had on a pin that was Ukrainian flag. And Susan's hair was being processed, so she went over to sit at this other table, and this woman came over after she helped the girl get her hair cut um, and sat down, and Susan said, I like your pin, and this whole story started. And come to find out, Anna, this woman, is from Moldova and has extended family in the Ukraine and has lived in the US since she was 14. She has her master's degree, works for a big company, um, and she wanted to help. But she knows that the systems in Ukraine are very, very corrupt. So money that we're sending there and supplies that we're sending there are not getting to the most needy. And so she was wanting to help, but wanting her money, her supplies, she wanted to get things to the people as they really need them. Apparently they load supplies on a truck and that driver drives off never to be seen again. He just goes somewhere and sells the stuff. You know, there's a whole, the, the, the po political climate can be very corrupt, corrupt. And so she found out that there was a gentleman in Seattle who runs a nonprofit who was a refugee himself um, that decided to quit his job and just do this to support Ukraine full time. And so she shared that information with Susan about this man. And then she told this story. She went to Poland with five suitcases full of medical supplies for a maternity ward in a city that's being bombed. And while she was there, she also brought back three Ukrainian young people. What happened was people found out that Anna was trying to help, that she was helping this nonprofit and a local international school here in Minneapolis reached out and said, if you know of children that want to come to the US, if they can get into the international school by taking some tests, they could live here. They have a campus um, and or they could go to public school and we would be able, we would facilitate that. So Anna started putting the word out and Anna's a single younger person who's never had children and she had five families in the Ukraine who wanted their children to get out because the kids right now in the Ukraine can't go to school. Their Wi-Fi is super in and out, their water is in and out, their electricity, their lights is in and out. Like they don't, even in the cities that are not being, there, that are right close to the, the border that are not being bombed. They, their access is terrible. And so she had these five families that they, they started going through this process. They needed visas. The men can't leave the country. They can't cross the border, but the mothers can. So the mothers could go across the border and bring their children to Poland, to Warsaw, and meet Anna, who they've never met, and hand over two 14-year-olds and a 15-year-old. So it ended up being three children Two of them got into the international school and one's going to public school and living with a host family. Um, but they they're spend every weekend with Anna, all three of them. And they become like siblings. They're super close. When they came, they spoke English, but not well. Anna was translating all the time. Um, one of the kids got super homesick. They were really struggling at first and now they're doing great. They're involved in stuff and they're keeping a blog and it's called the Ukrainian uh, students blog ukrainian.mn.com and you can see the videos of these three kids and what they like to do and they came here with nothing like you know they they came to Minnesota which is super cold so they need they needed everything so Anna got a grant from the hospital foundation to help get them here 
because, you know, money. So she took these suitcases over and met this Christina at a bus stop. And Christina is the courier who took the five suitcases and traveled back into Ukraine and across like literally running, apparently, you know, kind of running and hiding and getting this these supplies to this maternity ward in this hospital. And then once the supplies got there, she sends a picture back to this nonprofit so that we people know. So Susan said, what can I do to help? And Anna said, oh my goodness, there's, there, there's so many things we can all do, but we, the maternity ward, they can't get tourniquets in the Ukraine and the, urine, the, the babies have no clothes. Like, um, some of, some of the mothers, you know, have some yarn and, but anyway, she said, you know, I, I could take a suitcase or Christina could get a suitcase to the mothers. If you guys wanted to knit baby blankets, baby hats, baby booties, that kind of stuff. So my library knitters group, the beginner knitters, have been knitting for six weeks for this group. And we didn't all know the whole backstory. I knew some of it because I watched the video, but they didn't know the whole backstory of why all this stuff was being sent. So a week ago Saturday, Susan had all of us, the entire knitting group and um, Anna, and Anna told the story. And so I videoed, I didn't start right away because I didn't think of it, but I videoed two little segments of Anna telling the story at the table. And I will put those at the end so that you can watch Anna talk about the journey and the consulate and the embassy and how they told her they, she probably couldn't get into Ukraine because Ukraine probably wouldn't let the kids out with her. So that's why they had to go to Poland. I mean, it is like World War II, you know, where they were shipping their kids off on trains. like. It is so, and these women, these they had to hand their children over and the kids are getting straight A's. The boy got moved up in his math class. He's gonna become on the math team. He's swimming on the swim team. He's a very good swimmer. Like they're having a wonderful time, but there are still challenges, right? There are still things like Anna doesn't have a printer <laughs> and the kids need to print stuff. And so, you know, she, and, and Anna will not ask for any money. She, she, is trying to get help, like she needs insurance for these kids and they wouldn't let her put the kids on her insurance, even though now she's their legal guardian. She had to become their legal guardian or to take the kids. Um, so like Lutheran Social Services has now stepped up, but one of the kids got influenza, they had to take her to urgent care and they didn't have insurance yet. So now they have a bill to pay. Uh, one of the kids needs a new laptop, right? Like, like this is real stuff, right? Like, they're here now and they're safe. Their families may need to come, but right now their families are not in cities that, not that they couldn't be bombed, but are not in great uh, dire, you know, circumstances. Anyway, so I have all the info. I have Anna's um, info for Venmo. If you just want to send Anna a couple of dollars so that she can and you can put a note in there, you know, she could buy some things for the kids. And she also is now going to do a holiday craft sale with these kids. The, she went to speak um, to the Minnesota Women's Club in Minneapolis, and they're having a craft show in, in its, uh, you know, nice facility. And they're having an, an upper, you know, nicer craft sale. And she asked if the kids could have a table. And the table is $75. And I'm not sure why the women's club didn't gift the table, but I'm gonna fig I'm gonna ask about that because that's silly. But the, she wants the kids to make some things so that the kids could earn some money for some Christmas gifts. So that they're not just always asking for money, that they can like make some money. And one of the girls is an artist. So she is going to print some cards. She's gonna do some cards, um, paint and draw um, on some, and we're gonna have Amber who you all know and love, and I know you miss her dearly because people write me all the time and she's she's doing fine, um, but she's, she's just working, you know, 10 and 12 hour days and I, I don't talk to her as much as I would like either. But I called, I texted her and said, can you call me? I have a printing question. And of course she was like, I'll print them, no charge. Let it be my gift. I'll put no cards, envelopes, send the artwork. We'll get it scanned in. So. We're gonna print those so that she can sell them in little packages. And then they're talking about making ornaments, which is why I was looking at ornaments, 
ornaments, which is how I found that little book video. Um, cause we were thinking, you know, the kids could paint little Ukrainian flags on ornaments and sell them and tie them with blue and yellow ribbon or whatever. Like we're just, they don't want to make thousands of dollars. They just want to make a little bit of money, right. To have their own, you know, a little bit money, money, but they're also in school and studying and learning new languages and new customs. And Anna's trying to set them up with like mentor people of the things that they're interested in. The whole thing is, is just very fascinating to me. Um, so the website for the um, nonprofit is uh, Teach Ukrainian Youth. You can make a donation and choose which project you'd like it to support. And that's at imiracleproject.org. And that is the nonprofit that has a connection in Ukraine that gets pictures back after the supplies have been dropped off. So they know that it's getting to the right place and the right people. And then the student's blog is ukrainian.mn.com. Um, and then I have the Venmo for Anna Prisakari. Pris Pris um, and I will put that up in the show notes down below. And um, you can also knit for the Ukrainian refugees that are here in Minnesota. And Anna will collect anything you've already knit. So if you have some charity hats, some mittens, because we have refugees coming to Minnesota because of the war. And in if you can put those in the, the mail and get them to Anna by December 4th, it's a super quick turnaround. But you know, some of you can knit a hat in a day um, or two. And if, if you wanna put them in the mail to Anna, I have Anna's address. And so you can just email me and I'll send you her address. I don't really wanna put her personal address out on the Ravelry group or anything, but I'm happy to just email it to y'all, copy and paste it. Um, and she is meeting with uh, the head of the, you, the people who are helping the Ukrainian refugees who are coming here right now who have nothing and they're she called them through Lutheran Social Services of Minnesota, and they need hats and scarves and mittens and socks and things like that, warm, you know, warm stuff. And so I said, I'll mention it. Like I may have people who have, you know, can throw it in a, an envelope and, you know, padded envelope and, and get it to you by December 4th. So all these things have been happening in the last couple of weeks. So we're trying to help the kids come up with ideas of things that they could sell, that they could make, where they could make a few dollars. And then the note card thing kind of is working out really well. Um, I had a Zoom call with um, Mary, um, who's a library knitter, um, and then Anna and myself yesterday to discuss like a craft day where the, the kids could get together with some adults and they could, they have to figure out how to like set up the table. And I haven't quite figured out how they're going to take money because they probably should be able to take credit cards from these w women <laughs> at this craft thing. Um, so uh, we're it, like, you know, how you're still working through stuff, but you're trying to share it before you have all the details completely down. That craft sale is like on December 15th, um, something like that. But if you want to help. You know, maybe at Thanksgiving, you want to just be thankful for everything we have and you want to send Anna $5. I just think it would be really nice if she could get a printer at home. She said she didn't need one for her work, but now the kids, every time the kids want to print, they have to go to hit her mother, Anna's mother's house. <laughs> Apparently Anna's mother said, you don't even have children. How are you going to take on these three kids? And Anna was like, yeah. And she, she went through so much paperwork to make this happen. Yeah, so, it, you know, when you have that kind of connection that's so close to you, it really makes, it's a heart, right? Heartbeat. You're just like, wow, these kids, like, up and left their parents. And, you know, kids go away for a year to live with host families all the time, but their country isn't in war, <laughs> right? Like, something terrible could happen while they're away. It's just, so no wonder they, they might struggle a little bit when they get here. And yeah, we're just, we're just figuring things out here, folks. So I know you will all step up. You'll send birthday cards to Axel and you'll 
either send a donation to the nonprofit um, or directly to Anna uh, just to help, just to help with expenses or knit something or some things you have knit. Like maybe you even have a hat that you knit that you wore and you don't wear it anymore, like a couple, right? You know, like, yeah, I think that that would be appropriate. Like I have a couple hats that I, like I've worn once and I have a couple favorites that I wear all the time. So why couldn't I, you know, send that along? Anyway, so, but we sent a whole, I put the picture in of all the items that were, and that's going in a suitcase to Seattle, and then we'll get, go over to the Ukraine. It can take about a month and it'll get to Christina and Christina will get it to the maternity ward. And then we'll get a picture that it arrives safely. And are, is there a chance that it won't arrive safely? Probably there is a chance, right? I mean, it should make it. Their other supplies are getting there. Other things they're sending in needs and this nonprofit is helping them purchase the things. Some of the stuff is easier purchased in Europe and quicker and they can get it over there and get it into the country. Some of the stuff they can't get in Europe as cheaply or at all and then it has to come from here. So it, there's just lots of logistics. I just really wanted to, to tell you guys the whole story. So Anna will be coming up and you can just listen to her. It's not super long, but I did sit at the end of the table and video her while she told that story. Okay, it's been an hour and 20 minutes already. I probably have some editing to do. I have a couple more things to show. So let's do that. I was looking for some stitch markers because I taught some beginners at the, uh, at, the car, uh, at the Family Learning Center. Couldn't think of the word. And I went online to find some cheaper stitch markers that um, I could share with people in those classes. And I thought that this pack was really nice. I was like, wow, it's by M-E-I-K-E-E-R, Miker, and it's 150 pieces. Yeah, Amazon. I mean, I know you can get these anywhere, but like when you buy the green and orange ones, you get like six. And they're a little more flexible, which I like better. The plastic, these are these are a little probably harder plastic, but I thought, wow, that was that was nice. Then I got my advent calendar box. I'm not gonna show um, what's inside as much, but this is my I went with twice sheared sheep this year. I don't know why I picked them. I just kind of liked their presentation. Um, I thought it was cool. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Um, I think I mostly get mini skeins and stitch markers, but I'm not sure. I can't remember. Won't that be fun? So I'm looking forward to that. Opening one each day. And then I ordered Cody's Advent. Um... I got this from Chewy and it had several different kinds of treats in it. He wouldn't care. He would eat the same treat every single day, which a lot of the advent from dogs are, but I like opening something different every day for him. So I got him this one. This is Himalayan Pet Supply. So our advents are sitting here stacked up. Then we have the giveaway this week. That's still sitting here. So this is the giveaway from last time, the two skeins and the um, little scissors. And I did the random number generator for the comments under the YouTube video. There were 160, six something comments and it was number 35. So I counted down 35 comments and it was Janet Robertson. Janet, you won. And Janet is a longtime viewer and commenter of the podcast. And Janet is having surgery, uh, back surgery, um, December 1st. And so Janet, I want to wish you well on that. And that I hope that you recover as well as I did from my hip. I am riding the bicycle. We have a recumbent bicycle in the bedroom that's been gathering dust. And I got on it for the first time uh, a week and a half ago. I didn't know how that hip would do with that, and it did great. So I rode six minutes and I thought, oh, this is going great. I could do more. And then I thought, you should probably get off. 
just saying. So I did, and I was really glad I did because my leg muscles are very gone, <laughs> very gone. So it didn't hurt ever, but the whole leg was very tired, very, and I got a little winded in six minutes, which is like, that's how fast you lose your, you know, your oomph. Anyway, so now, then I did eight, now I'm up to 10 and I'm just working my way up. I think I could go further, you know, longer, further now, but I don't want to, I don't want to have a lot of pain afterwards. Like I just want to be able to get on it again the next day. And so that, that part is going well. The giveaway for this week, I have a package of um, a pin, a yarn pin. So I have this cute little pin from Twin Mountain Handcrafts. This yarn and a skein of Malabrigo Dust Terrace. And this is a um, hundred grams of bamboo or bamboo, Corey. Merino wool and baby alpaca, 50-50. So it is um, tonal in that it has some lights and darks right within this every strand. It is lovely yarn. I have a Friendship Road sweater in this yarn. It's just lovely. It's really nice. I would highly recommend it. So it is... Um, 210 yards to 100 grams so just like a worsted weight uh, but it's a it's a little lighter just a tiny bit lighter than a worsted um, in what it looks like but it's 210 yards per 100 so if you want to make a comment this week down below and you don't have to write something nice but man do you guys write nice things to me like I am so thankful for each of you because your comments are just really almost always positive 99.9% .9 of the time your comments are positive and uplifting and helpful and yeah so if you want to just put yarn that's fine too that that'll get you an entry I just look at the total number of comments and I do the random number gen generator and I have several more things on the table here to um, show that I've gotten and stuff. So I also got the Woolens and Nosh Advent Skein, which I'm super excited about because Michelle is an amazing dyer and I really should eat that candy out of there because I'm pretty sure it's a caramel. Um, <laughs> her friend in her town has the right um, red kite candy company. And I, if I remember right last year, it was a caramel. I didn't get the skein last year. So every day is a different stripe. So it's 24 stripes. So you cast your socks on and then you knit a stripe a day. And I'm not a huge sock knitter anymore. Like I just have so many socks, but I thought that that would be so fun. So I did get that from Michelle. And Michelle and I are gonna do a little collaboration coming up here. A couple of you commented that the Chim Chimney sock pattern would be great as a Christmas stocking and you're right. It would also be great as a kid's stocking, and I need someone to knit that up. So if you have a baby or a kid and you want to fudge the numbers, I will give you the numbers um, because I didn't write the pattern for a small kid's like baby to toddler size, but I could just have an addendum at the end with some numbers. Um, let me know. Uh, but one, I do have a tester who is knitting the yarn the biggest size of the DK using air and weight yarn so it'll make a Christmas stocking. Uh, just follow the pattern, bigger yarn, follow the biggest size of the DK I think is what she's using or fingering, can't remember which number is bigger. Maybe the fingering numbers are bigger. It's been crazy, I have 13 testers and we had a heel problem. Um, I interviewed a new uh, tech editor this week, um, someone that is going to be helping me out going forward. Um, this will be my third, fourth tech editor. Um, I've worked with some people who were new to tech editing and, um, and this woman is extremely experienced. Um, she was the editor of a knitting magazine and so we had a Zoom this week and she's willing to take me on. 
I'm not a perfect pattern writer and I would like to be better, but I would also like um, more better help. So we chatted and we're gonna we're gonna see about moving forward. She does tech editing for some yard yard large yarn companies. Um, so I met her and then I said, you know, would you be willing to work with me? So we're gonna we're gonna see about doing that. And I am still teaching at Stephen B, my fixer upper class in person on November 30th. So that's coming up. And then on December 14th, I'm teaching fixer upper on Zoom. So you can go over to the Stephen B website and sign up if you wanna do that on Zoom. Then I can see all your bright, shiny faces. I had a request to um, for some new people to explain the end of the podcast when I go through all of the little stories, you know, um, keep it colorful, those. And so I'm going to do a little video for new viewers, uh, people who are catching up, right? Like people find me and, you know, and then they start, they've, they start and then they want to go back and watch, but that's a ton of watching. So they're watching the new ones and they don't know what those stories mean, which totally makes sense, right? So I'm gonna put a video up of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little terms I use at the end, my little sign off terms. Um, so you'll see that come out and if you know what they all are and you've been watching forever, good for you, you don't have to watch again. But if you haven't ever, heard all those little stories or you're not going back to the beginning to figure out what they all mean then there will be like a short well I'm never short but I'm gonna say can I do it in 20 minutes maybe so you might see a video pop up maybe that'll be my vlogmas maybe I'll do that and put it up at the beginning of December for my vlogmas we'll see if I do vlogmas at all it's, I just can't even fathom that I have to get a Christmas tree this week the end of the week we're we're gonna we're gonna have a small group of my husband's co-workers over for dinner for Christmas dinner so we have to decorate and in the last couple years we haven't done much and in the past I've flipped my whole house to Christmas and my husband's not all in on that anymore because it's expensive because I have people do it and I don't want to do it and I can't go up and down the stairs right now step over step with my hip hundred times um, so he's saying no and I'm saying yes so we're having that discussion How about that don't you love the financial talks with spouses honey can I talk to you for a minute you just know you're just like oh we're gonna have a financial talk some type of financial talk I'm super fortunate. He he collects old cars and restores old cars, so his hobby is extraordinarily expensive. But then he sells them for lots of money. And I just wear my stuff. <laughs> so anyway, until next time. I love you all. Come in for your hug. You're just such a great group. I think we all have to get together and have a party sometime, have a big gathering of folks somewhere maybe we could invite amber and she could get away from work we could all gather somewhere although i don't know she's got a senior in high school yeah it's crazy okay no green bananas waddle on you'll never regret ripping back don't complain with your mouth full keep it colorful keep your fork buy the gravy seven little stories that you all need to know. <laughs> keep it colorful, keep your fork in case of emergency. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. Uh, stay warm if you're in the northern climates. I uh, hope you don't have a ton of snow. We got the snow tires put on yesterday, which is part of that Instagram story, so go check it out. Bye. Um, sponsor someone from Ukraine to interview the United States. So I started brainstorming, like maybe I can use that program. Um, so I started to learn what it takes, uh, what it means to be a sponsor. And then I talked to parents. And at that time, only one of them was distinct, like he, we have connections, but like she's like fifth cousin of my mom's dad, you know, like <laughs> extreme, very, like very thin connections. <laughs> 
And that family said, um, for uniting for Ukraine, kids cannot travel on their own. You have to travel with a parent or legal guardian. And parents, they were very keen to remain in Ukraine. They said, we're not going with the kids, so you just gotta take one of the kids. And that family said, well, you know, why you don't become legal guardian for our daughter? And so I, I, I thought about it and I was like, okay, well, looks like it's the only option. And then I told the other families, you need to find someone who can be a legal guardian. And they could not find anyone. Some of them have relatives in the US, some, some don't. And they just asked me, like, can you become legal guardian for my kid? And those kids were strangers. Like we've never met, we never, it was since June 1st, we were on the phone, right? So this is family I've never interacted with until that time. Um, and uh, my mom was very nervous. Like, I don't have kids, I'm a single woman. Like, are you okay to be responsible for three teenagers? Well, back then it was five. Um, and I was like, well, mom, this is what I can do. Like, who else? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know how to ask someone to become legal guardian of a stranger. And I'm already in the process. Mm -hmm. So I considered and I did it. I went through the process. Um, it took a while because um, I got lawyers that were doing pro bono through Rotary. They were like, we cannot charge you for this. I was like, I, I, I will need money for other things. Mm -hmm. um, and um, surprisingly, it took much longer. Typically, that process goes within a few days to a week. And for me, it was about two months. Mm -hmm. uh, the lawyer thought because I was taking girls and one boy, and I was a single woman, they wanted to make sure it would not be sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. So it was extra steps that we had to go through. Um, and uh, the kids were going through testing because you need to get admitted to the school. They have very high standards. Mm -hmm. So those poor kids were testing in English and math during the bombs and with very limited Wi-Fi. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it was not pleasant what they went through and two of them got admitted. And um, I was thinking that maybe none of them will get admitted. Mm -hmm. So that was the time I went back to the Rotary saying, can I find host families? If all of them don't get admitted, I would like them to stay with the family, be it a week, be it a month, whatever works for them, because I, I have a very small condo. So mm -hmm. it's a default on paperwork, but it would be really good for kids to be with someone too. And uh, I started to find different host families who's like, okay, you know, it sounds very weird, but we're in it. Like <laughs> after a few conversations, they, they called me like, we're in it. So we were just waiting with school mm -hmm. decision and then two got in and it was their families that said, you have host families, you have private school, public school is very good too. If you stay with host family, you'll stay with the, you'll go to public school. Um, and uh, for safety reasons, again, they decided to take public, uh, private school because they're like, I know someone will feed. Um, there was a lot of mistrust that American family would feed their kids, will really take care of them. And they said, we know kind of school kind of has that responsibility, so it would be better for the kids to be at the private school. And they live there. It's a boarding school. So I was like, okay. Uh, so for one kid, I, I had a host family and we're like, well, let's see how it goes. We'll start with one week, one month. We'll check in. If it doesn't work out, the kid will come back to me or we'll find different host family. No one has been in the situation before, so we'll just see how it happens. Um, and then uh, as soon as the paperwork came through, um, one of the people who was really involved, like in the, at that time I had like maybe like 10 people who were following through this process as I was updating like where I'm at. And uh, when the paperwork came through, the person like, Susan, like, what can I do? And I just, 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 I'm very uncomfortable asking for money. And at that point I was like, do you have Delta miles? And they're like, why? It's like, I need four tickets to go to Poland last minute. <laughs> it's very expensive. If you have miles, could you donate the miles? And the person like, don't worry, I'll buy all the tickets. Mm -hmm. And they did. Like, wow. like within a day, they bought all four tickets. I called the families and I was like, you have to be in Warsaw in a week and a half. Yeah, so those families, I was like, you have to get to, to Warsaw <laughs> and you have only, uh, because I couldn't take too much time off work. Um, and I was like, I'll be in Warsaw. Um, 
and I'll come the day before just in case if something happens with the plane. Um, and I'll give you a day and a half to make it there and then kids and I fly to the United States. So all families like, okay, we're going, it's happening. So they were packing everything. Um, I made sure like, please bring those documents because if you forget something, there is no way I can take the kid on the plane. I brought all the paperwork from the, 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 the lawyer who was doing the paperwork here for me so the parents could sign there. And it was just the moms because dads cannot leave the country. Um, so um, the, uh, the moms came, they all had struggles coming. Uh, they came by bus, multiple buses, different trains. Um, me finding them, like for the first time in person, I'm like, <laughs> I'll be at this bus stop at two o'clock or 6 a.m. Um, and um, I met, I connected to Rotarians in Warsaw, so they were hosting me. So again, it helped me with the costs. Um, and this, this poor person, he was like driving back and forth to the bus stop like every two hours because we could not connect to the family and we did not know where they were because they're supposed to be at 6 a.m. They arrived like at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. because the line at the border was so long they got they had to wait for a very long time um, so we met I, I, I came I left Wednesday night I was in Warsaw Thursday and then Friday I went to to see how this Warsaw Rotary Club was helping Ukrainian people they have their own refugee center for mothers so it was nice to see like more action um, and then the families came uh, Saturday, we spent the Sunday together. Uh, where Terry showed us around, we did a walking tour of Warsaw. And Monday morning, we, the kids and I, flew to, to Minnesota, and moms went back to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, how long a trip was that for these? The one, fifteen, and the boys, fifteen. And that's the time when I brought all those medical supplies with me to Warsaw. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like a double mm -hmm. trip for me. So I went with all uh, five suitcases full of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at that time, I uh, this is like when I kind of like, okay, I'm <laughs> thinking I'll be in Poland. Like it's getting real. Um, mm -hmm. I really tried to figure it out, like where do I want the supplies to go? And um, through different groups, um, I connected to an American volunteer who was in Kharkov, and Kharkov is a very close city to Russian border. And she was, I called her, I was like, okay, you're a nurse, tell me how things are. She's like, it's really bad. Um, I was like, are you getting any supplies? And she said, there are no supplies that are going to Kharkov. All the medical supplies go to Lviv, western part of Ukraine. Maybe they'll get a little bit farther outside Lviv going to Kiev, but to Kharkov it's so dangerous no one goes there. There's like almost no um, non-Ukrainian people there. Like I'm, me and my brother are the only ones that I've met like who are non-Ukrainians. And that kind of really stood out to me. It's like, there are people there, no one is helping. How can I get supplies to that area specifically? So I called one of my friends and I was like, I, like you have connections to Haika? She's like, yeah, I was born there. Can you connect me to someone? I, I really want to like get some medical supplies there. It's just like, oh yeah, there's a girl. She's so active. She does. She's not afraid of anything. She like she's doing all the work. Let me connect you to her. So I I, I connected to Christina, and that girl is like a, like a fire like bird. She she's like I'm going through. She was running through bombs. She she was telling me the stories. I was like. I would never even like read about it and you went through it. <laughs> she was running through forests that had bombs in it and she survived and she's all about helping. And I said, well, I'll be in Warsaw. If you come to Warsaw, I'll give you stuff. And she came. So she came with one of the moms. Uh, they got on the same bus. I connected them. And uh, so that girl, the well, young lady, she's about my age and uh, um, I, I spent the night uh, with her and I said, <laughs> she, she started crying when I showed her five suitcases. She's like, no one ever gives me this much. Like, even like within Ukraine, maybe I'll find one and you gave me five. And I was like, you know what? You, I told her, bring additional suitcases because I was planning to give those suitcases for kids because they didn't have suitcases. Mm -hmm. And she brought like a small bag. She, that's what she saw. Like, I, I think you only bring this much. And she's like, 
oh my gosh, I don't have suitcases. Like, take the luggage with you. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll, we'll buy suitcases. And uh, uh, she is connected to the maternity ward in Kharkov. That's where uh, like women go for, for giving birth. And she's like, they have nothing. Like, no one really gives them anything. And um, I was like, what else do you need? And she's like, we need shampoo. We need, we need um, wipes, we need, gosh, she, she said like basic things, like not even medical supplies at all. It was like shampoo, conditioner, <laughs> so we can bathe babies and mothers, take showers, um, clothes, and um, the money that we raised through this nonprofit in Seattle, we just, we send it to a different volunteer we have in Romania. So she bought because these items were cheaper in Romania and she just mailed to her in Ukraine. Um, so I was like, okay, we'll stay in touch. Uh, let me know. She actually just recently delivered those items that I brought back in August because the doctor got in a, like, the doctor was supposed to meet her, got in a big car accident. So it prevented to get the supplies sooner. Um, so she just recently sent me the pictures that like, here's the doctor, here's all the boxes that you brought back in August. So the items that you have would be going to her. Um, to Christina, who will deliver to those hospitals in Kharkov. So it was like very like through different people that I was like, I really want to make sure the items I get, like I have confidence they'll get in the right hands. And mm -hmm. she's like, I totally understand um, because some people were giving her money. She would buy and she would say maybe three out of 10 trucks will, will get to Ukraine. As soon as uh, like the driver gets the items, they turn their phone off and you'll never hear from them again. They just disappear with your items. So I was like, this is why I want to do like person to person. And uh, I, I said like, you're so tired. You've been on the road for a day and a half. Stay like extra night because she was planning to go back straight. She's like, I don't know you. I don't know the families. I feel like not. I, I mean, it's not, I don't feel comfortable. I was like, don't worry, just stay with me, sleep with me. Like, I don't mind. Um, so she spent that, that day extra with us and she's like, I've been to Poland so many times, but I've never seen it because I always go in to get items and I drive back. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, it was really nice. I actually saw Warsaw. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, like I've been to Warsaw, it's like so many times, but I've never walked. So I never ate Polish food. And I took them for dinner, like to a traditional Polish restaurant. So it was, but that's how we got connected. And those are the items that will be going to Christina. So then will you be flying into more terrible mental health issues? She kept seeing her mom, dad, so she oh, couldn't focus on school. And um, the school was about to kick her out because the grades were not up to par. Um, so I reached out to Iowa State where I went to school and it's like, can you find me some students who might be willing to tutor the kids? And um, I, like I told one professor, professor told another professor, and now I have like five, seven tutors for them. Mm -hmm. um, she, like one, one of the kids is actually right now studying. And did the three of them um, come here speaking English? They they had some English, bit, right? yeah. They uh, they um, they spoke English at different levels. Some were better than the others, so it, it was different. Um, but right now, they don't even need me. And do the three of them feel a connection to each other? Yes, they're like siblings. Everyone thinks they're siblings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks that this is like I brought three, like one family. They yeah, no one can believe that they just met. Like we Twelve all met years. August fifteenth for the first wow. time. Wow. And they got connected and they know like to help and they call like Zlata is sick so the other students are calling her. Um, the uh, One of the girls is doing this, the, the blog, I told them like blog about whatever you want, years later it will be your memories. It's not for other people, it's for you. And then you practice in English, like I'm pushing them. Um, so she, like when I was just driving here, I was talking to, to the girl Irina who's doing the blogging. And she's like, can you check? Can you check my spelling? I'm like, I don't, really, I don't think I need to yeah. because I, this is an experience. Yeah. And it would be very raw material for people to see like at what level your English is. And then you can see your improvements. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about spelling. It's totally okay to have some grammar misspelling. But she's like, can you check before I publish?